And I would say I was food obsessed. Yeah, I a lot of women are, I think. High carb, food obsessed, could never get enough, was constantly thinking about how I was going to curate whatever was organic or healthy at the time. And it was a really unhealthy relationship with food. I think a lot of women have that unhealthy relationship with food. But what I've noticed is the more protein I add in, the less hungry I am for craving things that I wanted before adding a lot of protein in. And also, if you have a sweet tooth and then you supplement protein instead, you'll probably kill your sweet tooth. You know what else kills your sweet tooth? Just a little side magnesium. But that's a different story. I was going to say my cooking, but yeah, (laughs) that works as well, too. You know, I noticed the same thing. And that was one of the things that really began my obsession with dietary protein. I know it sounds silly, but it was this and still is this underrepresented macronutrient. So you have muscle, which is largely thought about in the fitness arena, completely devoid in the health space, especially as a physician and even going through medical school and training and beyond. Then you have everybody vilifies carbohydrates. This is true. Are you going to be high carb, low carb? Is it going to be the food guide pyramid? Whatever it is. And then, of course, fat is so controversial. We're finally seeing a lot of heat around protein. But for decades, it was kind of um, pushed to the, the sidelines. As I think that you, unless you are into bodybuilding, I'm sure that you can appreciate. I mean, a lot of young guys, you know, in college, 18 years old, they're thinking about protein shakes. But after that, it's, it's kind of like to the wayside. When you look back, when you first started implementing protein into your diet, what was some easy things that you did to get more protein? Because if someone's listening and they're like overwhelmed by adding more protein, what did you do when you started? Yeah. Well, the first thing is I identified what was a good protein source. I was vegetarian for many years and I was also macrobiotic. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. I was macrobiotic. But maybe just explain it if (laughs) someone doesn't. A macrobiotic is eating locally, eating with the seasons. It's very low protein. Maybe there's a little bit of fish, but it is largely a plant-based diet. And I couldn't support my training. I was really into fitness. I still am arguably into fitness. And I needed to learn what were some good sources that I could recover. I just struggled with recovery. And I started with fish. I started with eggs. You know, when we think about high quality protein, we do think about chicken and beef and bison and fish and eggs and whey and dairy. These are all high quality protein sources. When we think about protein and the quality of protein, that simply relates to the amino acid content. Without getting too scientific, really, we don't eat for protein. We eat for those amino acids. There are 20 amino acids, nine of which are essential, meaning we have to get them from our diet. The other we can, uh, or just obviously non-essential, we can get them, make them. When we think about protein quality, we're really eating for those essential amino acids. And so, it's hard to get, and tell me if I'm wrong, from medical, it's hard to get those essential a- amino acids without protein of high quality. That would be meat, mostly meat products. Well, you can totally get a dietary protein from plant-based sources, but it doesn't mean that it's high quality. And when we talk, yeah, when we talk about, and this is just, this is a non-emotional conversation. It's really just based on the um, essential amino acids and the scoring. So there's scoring systems of amino, of uh, foods that really relate to these essential amino acids. So from a scientific standpoint, it's not to say you can't get these others, but if you want the highest quality amino acids, you need to get them from most likely a meat source. Yeah. A meat or a, um, yes, like an egg or a whey. Yes. And for people that eat plant-based or vegan or vegetarian, mm-hmm. what can they do if, like, say, say they have a moral reason why they're course, not eating course. meat? Where do you tell those people to start? Uh, legumes, soy, pea protein. This is where the isolates come into play. They, you know, because the tricky part is if we're all looking for optimizing body composition, which I think is fair to say that we do and we want to, we need to be very careful about overconsumption of just calories. And with calories, we need to think about overconsumption of carbohydrates. With plant-based sources of protein, typically also ride along carbohydrate intake. Again, this is not to say that there's anything wrong with carbs. It's the amount. Mm -hmm. For an individual who is plant-based, you are looking at, there's rice, pea blends. There's obviously legumes and soy. Those are kind of the, the things that you would think about when it comes to protein consumption. And also, the other thing is you're going to need more. That, that, well, that's the thing is you need to eat a lot more. You're going you're gonna to need to eat 
you know, the, the current recommended dietary allowance is 0.8 grams per kilogram, which is really low. Soy, for some reason, this is like weird, but I just feel like it has estrogen in it. There are estrogen-like activities in things like pea and soy. It's not necessarily estrogen, but it, it does have estrogen-like activity. You bring up a really good point. Have you ever seen a pea isolate exist in nature? No. I, I haven't either. That makes me think, what are the long-term consequences of a food source that we haven't eaten over a period of time? I don't know what those unintended consequences are. If individuals are over-consuming or making the isolates their primary source, we just don't have the data. It hasn't been around long enough. So if you have to eat a protein powder, which brand are you reaching for? Well, as you know, we were talking about this earlier. I work with First Form. I love their natural whey protein. Okay. I think it's incredible. I also think that if an individual is going to rely on powders, then you can do a rice pea blend. Okay. But if if, if it was you when you were first starting, you, yeah. it sounds like- you I would do a whey protein. But you slowly implemented fish. You slowly I implemented did. eggs. Oh, man. And I cried when I did it. I just felt so guilty. I remember- Why? Well, at the time, I was largely vegetarian, and I felt really, really guilty. And I made, there was a defining moment where I realized I just wasn't able to perform the way that I had the potential to perform. 